Hello guys and welcome to the vlog. We're joined with Amy and Matt of the uh, Traveling Together Journal. So since it's the beginning of the video, hit subscribe to their channel, hit subscribe to our channel because we're going to be sharing tips on how to survive and thrive in Baja, California, Mexico. So Beck uh, and I have an expedition vehicle and we have been traveling Mexico this winter, uh, but I grew up in San Diego, so I was sneaking below the border to go drink in high school and then fish along the Pacific coast in my 20s. So got plenty of my own experiences. I always went diving in Mexico. That was my thing. Um, we are the Traveling Together Journal and uh, we spent two years driving through Mexico and Central America and then all the way back up. So we've been through Baja, multiple times before and after that. And we are here to help tell you how to thrive and survive in Baja. And we're gonna cut right into that right now. forgot the most important tip for traveling through Baja. Hmm. Tip zero, don't drink the water. <laughs> the tap water that is. Hi, I'm Jason. And I'm Kara, and we're the Everlanders. We just got back from a two month road trip through Baja in our self-built expedition rig, Beastie. In our experience, some cities do have treated tap water, but many other areas of Baja, the tap water is not suitable for drinking. And who wants E. coli or Giardia? Not I. So why take the risk? According to Article 12 of the Mexican Constitution, everyone should have access to clean, affordable, and accessible uh, drinking water, which is why you'll find a water purification service in every little small town you go through. A dollar for a five gallon jug of clean, purified water can save you a world of hurt. Although we installed a four stage water filtration system with UV, it was a little bit overkill for Baja. But if for some reason we weren't able to get purified water, uh, we could fill our jugs with uh, the tap water that was available and then we would put one teaspoon of bleach in each of our five gallon jugs and then that of course would still run through our uh, filters which would remove the bleach taste and through the UV sterilizer just for good measure and then we'd have good drinking water that way. But like we said, clean, affordable drinking water was available in every town that we went to and it made it easy to stay hydrated in Baja. All right, back to you guys. Jumping right in, number one, you're gonna have to learn to embrace Mexico. Probably the biggest question we get is, are you afraid to go to Mexico? Mm -hmm. No, we're not. No. We love it, we've traveled there our whole lives and can confidently say it's a fantastic place to go and you'll have a wonderful yeah. time. I also think it's important not to make comparisons mm -hmm. to uh, your home, wherever it may be. We'll just use the United States as an example. You are a guest in somebody else's country and uh, just enjoy the moment. For us, one of our favorite countries of traveling all the way down to Panama and back is Mexico. Mexico is amazing, the people are amazing, the food is amazing, and you should definitely take your time and enjoy it. And Baja in particular is just a land of adventure. There's just so much open space to explore and enjoy. There's a lot of freedom. There's a lot more freedom than you're used to in the States, and that's a really good reason to go and experience Baja. All right, number two. We suggest that you do not break the law. <laughs> <laughs> um, thinking more specifically about um, things like carrying drugs or guns across the border, you're not allowed to, don't do it. Um, a lot of people get this, like I call it a vacation brain, uh, where you don't really think and you just have this idea that Mexico is a wild west, you can do whatever you want. It's not true, it's a developed country, they have laws, you're supposed to follow them. As long as you do follow them, then you don't have to worry about the police or anything else. Everything goes a lot smoother. 
Number three, and honestly, I think this holds true no matter what country you visit, not just Mexico, but attempt to learn the language, at least a little bit, like some key phrases. Please, thank you. Um, you know, if you're going to uh, ask for directions or something, maybe some things like that. Um, for the bigger stuff, Google Translate. See. 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 Uh, yeah. So if you have cell phone service, and uh, by the way, if you're in a major town in Mexico, you actually have some really lightning fast internet speeds on your phone, but Google Translate is an amazing tool. But if you're gonna be off, like way, way off, you know, a little pocket book of common phrases would probably be good to have. But we've held entire conversations with uh, veterinarians, veterinarians. <laughs> uh, friends that we have met and they just embraced us and took us in and, uh, yeah. They didn't speak English. We didn't speak Spanish. Oh, but, you give me a little bit of credit. I grew up in San Diego <laughs> working around so a lot of amazing people from Mexico. So yeah. I can get myself into trouble. All right. Number four, do not pay bribes. A lot of people ask about uh, the police and how they might try to get bribes from you all the time. That's not really true. They don't do it as often as they used to. And it's really focused around some large cities, mostly in the north from our experience. Um, but our policy is to not pay bribes. Um, usually the process goes that they'll kind of hint towards wanting some money from you and you just kind of take it as an opportunity to practice your Spanish and waste their time until they get bored and move along. <laughs> it helps to insist upon a ticket. Um, if they are a corrupt cop, they're not going to want to write you a ticket. From our experience, this didn't actually happen in Baja, but a different part of Mexico the cop had asked for such a large incentive to allow us to go free in the moment that when we said we wanted a ticket he couldn't write a ticket for the same amount of money because then his force would have known he was going for a bribe so he eventually just let us go um also taking a picture or pulling out a phone and getting an image of the police officer who is bothering you if you feel like it's not going correctly is a really good way to give them incentive to just let you go. Um, at the end of the day, if you take a ticket um, and they take your driver's license, which is what they're going to do, they're going to take it to the local police station. Just go to the local police station to pay the bribe. You're helping... It's not a bribe. Or You're a, paying the bribe. <laughs> sorry. Pay the ticket. You're helping every other traveler after you say, you can't bribe us. Um, and then the next thing we're going to talk about is your money. So you're probably going to take a lot of cash with you. That's one option. And you want to separate and store it. So you're going to have the cash that's on you, maybe a hundred bucks at most. Things aren't expensive. You don't need a lot of money on you. And then you're going to have somewhere hopefully safe to put the rest of the cash. Um, another option is to not take any cash and just take your debit card. The amount of money that you're going to spend, just take out your maximum amount or maximum amount the ATM will allow you to take out with your debit card and just go one or two transactions at a time. There's plenty of cities, plenty of ATMs. You don't need to worry about it. Um, and then if you're going to be traveling for a really long time, you can go get a Charles Schwab account and it takes a bit of time to set up, but you get all of your ATM fees back and you don't have, and you get all of the, um, foreign transaction fees. Yes. Thank you. You get all of them back and it, every month or two months you'll see these refunds. I think one thing worth adding uh, from our perspective, and uh, you guys just do it as well, but photocopies of your identifications, uh, your passport and your uh, driver's license. Yeah, very, and you very should have valuable. copies of each other's. Exactly. And copies that neither of you have on your person. And even a family member on the other side mm -hmm. of the border. So, yep. yeah, just be prepared. Number five, enjoy the cuisine. And I keep getting ones that apply to no matter what country you visit, <laughs> <Yeah>. do this. <laughs> but um, go spend some time in the grocery store. Buy a few things to taste that you've never had before. Um, you know, maybe Google some recipes before you go or something. But It's cheaper, guys. It's so cheap down there. You can eat like a king, drink like a queen. Um, Go out and enjoy the restaurants because mm -hmm. the two of you sometimes can eat for like 10 bucks exactly. and that includes drinks. So And the seafood. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's a peninsula surrounded by ocean on all three sides. The most amazing seafood. Shrimp, 
clams, fish, lobster, like everything. Also, here's a, uh, an amazing place to visit. It's called Valle de Guadalupe. It's only about a half hour to an hour below the border from uh, the San Diego area and it's Classic. Mexico's wine region. And it is absolutely amazing. If you're looking for like a romantic weekend in wine country that has a little more flair, hit up Valle de Guadalupe. It's like 50 miles south of Tecate yeah. border. Yep. And it, they're calling it like Mexico's Napa Valley. It's awesome. What I would say about eating in Mexico is eat out as often as your budget will allow. And when you're traveling through a town, no matter how small it is, if you see a restaurant or even a little hut and it has a ton of locals sitting at it, even if it's five or six and it's small, you should stop there. It's probably gonna be really cheap and really delicious. All right, number six. Bring the water toys. Uh, Baja's, like we said earlier, pretty much surrounded by the ocean. And on the Sea of Cortez side, it's quite warm. So it's great for swimming, relaxing, fishing. On the Pacific side, you get quite a bit of swell. So bring your surfboard and have a good time. I think being the uh, fisherman at heart, I have to add that if you are fishing from shore in Mexico, you do not need a fishing license. Number seven, you really should be properly insured. And I'm not just talking about the automobile. And you definitely need to insure your automobile if you uh, kind of want to get it fixed if anything happens because your auto insurance policy will not work below the border. And our recent tip for saving money, uh, you know, there's Vagabundos del Mar, uh, many, many agents for getting Mexico insurance. But AAA cut us a really amazing Killer deal at like... 60 to 50 percent off of what lewis and lewis and all those other uh Company places job. we're going to charge so insurance is very crucial also you need to think about medical insurance uh and i want to emphasize medical evacuation because if you are in a pickle because you're going to be doing extreme sports having fun in remote areas you really need to consider evacuation yeah we um, travel pretty extensively outside of the country, and so we have permanent uh, global health insurance. If you'd like to learn more about that, we've done a video that talks about nothing but that, and we'll link it below. But uh, if you're going to go for a couple weeks or a month, you can get some traveler's insurance that will cover you while you're down there, as well as cover you to get out of the country and back home to, to receive higher levels of care. Uh, if you're going to stay longer, then you could consider a a uh, more permanent plan and there are many companies out there that offer options yeah. and the um, longer the duration the, the cheaper the, the price deal. so you definitely want to make sure that you do get your vehicle insured because it's legally required in mexico and they will ask for your proof of insurance um, just at like the military checkpoints and uh, or if a police officer pulls you over um, another point is you do not need a temporary import permit for your vehicle if you're just going to baja if you're going to take the ferry over to mainland Mexico, then you will want to make sure that you stop at that extra office at the border crossing and get your temporary import permit or TIP, which is an easy process. Um, and, but like I said, you'll only need it if you are crossing over to mainland Mexico. And as far as insurance, if you say want to choose to only have like say an evacuation insurance for the big things, you can get away with getting basic medical help in these countries for very, very cheap. I thought I might have fractured my ankle. I went to the doctor, visit, plus x-rays, plus medicine for my ankle only cost me $25. So it's a huge difference. We're not used to it. It's a bit of a shocker. Um, but, and it goes the same for your dog. So if you have say medications that your dog is on or you're on, you can get those filled very easily at Walmart or any pharmacy and you just need a piece of paper that kind of looks official that says this is my prescription and they'll basically hand most things over to you without a local doctor's written notice and it's way cheaper I mean you literally can go buy three boxes get one free at Walmart pharmacy um, and the vets are also very cheap and there can be some good vets so just, just go, trust, you're gonna be okay. Number eight, don't be afraid to boondock. And what I mean is there is a lot of awesome on the beach RV camp spots, but Baja is a free for all. If there's not a sign that says don't camp here, 
you can camp there and the desert is beautiful so you can just drive out on some dirt road you see off the side of the highway and drive till it meets the ocean and pop up your tent or whatever just set up and enjoy the scenery a sunset is beautiful almost anywhere in Baja you can get sunrise and sunset all in the same day over water you could, yeah. You could. Yes, you could. You could. You we could. have done it. Yeah, yeah. I think what we have to add to that is there's many different types of travelers. And granted, our vehicle is fully self-contained and we do sometimes stay in the RV parks because we have great friends at Victor's RV in San Felipe. Uh, but also, you're going to find lots of compost. And it could be Victor's Campo, it could be Juanita's Campo, and they're just amazing places. They're usually uh, just a palapa and a place to park, and most of them are right on the water. Mm -hmm. So Baja is amazing because it's where the uh, desert meets the sea, for sure. And just make sure that you get out there and relax and enjoy. Don't rush, don't plan the whole thing to like every second of your trip. Yeah. Because we always we say this about Alaska our home as well but Mexico it's so true that it's as much a state of mind as a destination so make sure that you really embrace that number nine be aware of your surroundings now I want to preface this with you don't really have to be scared that's not what this is about this is about being sensible and it wouldn't matter if you're walking down the street in Chicago or if you're in Baja um, things like you know tucking your bag under your shoulder and making sure the zipper's on the inside of your body. And um, if you're going to be walking around at night, pay attention to who's around you while you're out there. Um, sensible things like that. Just don't have your nose in your phone, looking down, not looking up where you're going and looking at who's around you. Um, it's just, it's common sense, smart travel no matter where you are. <laughs> All right, number 10. You do not need to be afraid of the military checkpoints. These guys are just there, they're supposed to be there, and they're just doing their jobs. Um, they're actually there to keep you safe. So they're looking for people who are doing bad things, like running drugs or guns, like we suggested you don't do. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as you don't have the drugs or the guns with you, then it's just an opportunity to meet someone, practice your Spanish, and carry on your way. I will say, if you don't know what they're saying, this is what they're basically asking. Where did you come from? So where was the last place you were at and where are you going? And normally in that order. So if you have no idea what they're saying, just have those two answers ready for them and they'll be fine. And I also think less is more when you're dealing with customs, borders, or military checks. You don't need to get into a long-winded story. Oh, well, I'm heading down to Cabo, gonna spend a week in Loretto, <laughs> you know, they don't care. They want to know where yeah. you're spending tonight and where you spent last night. Exactly. And if they ask to look in your car, it's just routine. And as long as you don't have the drugs and the guns, you're going to be fine. And if you don't speak Spanish, you don't need to worry about that either. It's pretty obvious in hand gestures. Turn off your car, get out, then they'll point at the thing they want you to open. <laughs> you can figure it out. Yep. <laughs> Although it is rather intimidating to come up on men in camouflage and they're usually early 20s uh, doing their military time with automatic rifles and usually out in the middle of the desert exactly. where it feels like there's no one around to help but on our last trip we saw a sign that said if you do not I'm gonna paraphrase but essentially it says if the soldiers were not professional please report them to this agency yeah we've seen that too at quite a few checkpoints now yeah. they're really overall in Baja a lot of the stories you hear are gonna be from the past um, they're really cracking down on any kind of corruption from their officials, whether it's the military or the police these days. All right, number 11, we're going to talk about Baja Miles. What are Baja Miles? Seriously, they can be some rough miles. Um, generally speaking, you are not going to be driving 75, 80 miles an hour. It's not going to happen because you're going to fall into a pothole and your whole vehicle is going to get lost. <laughs> Um, Baja miles are rough because you're sharing the road with truckers and the roads are very narrow and sometimes there's absolutely no shoulder at all. So when you see a big 18 wheeler coming at you, you just pucker up and grab 10 and 2 on that wheel and just look right on past that vehicle. But they're slow, so you actually get better fuel economy, but 
They take longer. They take longer. And that being said, it's always, we like to travel in the morning hours. Mm -hmm. um, and if possible, like travel in a group with friends. Yeah. We regularly uh, either will meet people while we're down there. And once in a while, we'll bring somebody from home with us. Yeah. But, you know, there's safety in numbers. Um, if you start in the morning, then you have time to deal with whatever arises as the day progresses, be it car trouble yeah. or bad roads or road construction. At night, there's cattle. Yeah. A black cow on a highway with no lights and very little, like, uh, reflective paint. Yeah, it's just a bad recipe. So start your day early and uh, be off the road, be by, off the road by soon. Dusk. All right, talking about driving on Baja, we're going to move on to point 12. We're going to be talking about your vehicles and what you need to go to Baja. Um, you certainly don't need four-wheel drive. There's lots of places that you can camp and stay along the main paved highway. You could stay in hotels the whole time if you wanted to. But we really like having four-wheel drive. It opens up way more of the peninsula. It gives you way more opportunities. You're going to be dealing with soft sand and silt quite often if you get off the pavement. So four-wheel drive makes a big difference in that. Um, you might also want to carry some simple recovery gear. A uh, shovel and a toe strap can really go a long way. Um, and since you'll probably be going out camping, you'll be carrying plenty of water and food, so you'll be prepared in case you do get stuck out there and it takes you a day or two to self-recover. Um, an air compressor is a very important piece. Uh, anytime you're going on the sand, airing down your tires makes a very big difference no matter what kind of vehicle it is. Even if you're in a two-wheel drive van or something, airing down can really make the difference. One bit of information that's really good is four-wheel drive does not keep you from getting stuck. Sometimes it can get you stuck worse. Yeah, four-wheel drive doesn't keep you from getting stuck, <laughs> but it helps you get out. Yes. <laughs> Lucky number 13, it's well established that Baja is where the ocean meets the uh, desert. Now, that means, brings up the question, like, what is the best time of year to go to Baja? Uh, desert, that makes you automatically think uh, winter months. But, uh, you know, trust me, spending a whole winter in Baja would be a dream come true. Mm -hmm. But don't overlook the Pacific side during the heat of the summer. Um, the Pacific is a very cold body of water, especially compared to the Atlantic or Sea of Cortez. So you ha literally have two different climates on Baja. That's why a lot of people have uh, homes, expats, <laughs> homes in San Felipe for the winter and then Rosarito and Zanata on the Pacific side. Number 14, lock your stuff up. Basically, you want to keep the honest people honest. It's not that everyone's out there to come and steal your stuff. But if they walk by and they really like that chair and they don't see anybody around, there's a lot of people that might take it and it could just be another fellow camper. So just put all your stuff away or like we use cable locks and locks and we just lock everything to itself and then like to the tire. And that way, if somebody tries to pick it up, they're gonna be like oh wait I can't just leave with it so they'd have to be very very intentional thieves at that point to take our stuff and our personal experience that was enough for our whole trip so just some really simple keeping the honest people honest number 15 we are about to close it out here and we're gonna share our favorite resources for Baja in particular, Mexico in general with you. Uh, for us, we love to use iOverlander. Uh, it kind of gets you into some unique places to stay um, and not just, you know, the typical places you might see off the road. Um, the other book that we also really like is The Church's Guide to Baja. Uh, we actually got to meet them when they yeah. were doing their update in the winter of 2017. They're from Alaska too, so. Yeah, it's not the uh, formal name of the book, but if you just type into Amazon, Church's, Church's Baja. Baja book camping, <laughs> it will come up and they just revised it they did. last year, so it's and amazing. And it won't give you like the things to go do and see, but it's places to stay and kind of uh, tidbits that you'd want to know about, you know, certain areas. Yeah and um, just insider's information. But when it comes to resources, uh, iOverlander works offline. Mm -hmm. Very, very valuable. Uh, Maps.me, uh, make sure you load the area that you're visiting. That one works offline. Uh, and also a good old fashioned paper book. It's priceless. And probably more important than any of those things, 
is make friends with the locals and ask them because they know all the greatest secrets. Mm -hmm. So for resources, um, we used Maps.me a little bit, but over a longer period of time during our trip, we really enjoyed Google Maps. And Google Maps does have an offline download option, and you just have to do regions, and you can do all of Baja, and the maps do take up a lot of data on your phone, so you just need to make sure you have a little bit of space. And if you don't have enough space, you could just do north, and then if you're gonna do south, you delete north, and then you do south. Um, but they're really thorough. And then... Um, I also have a paper almanac that I carry. It's the Baja Almanac. They're quite hard to come by now because they're out of print, but if you can find one, the maps in it are actually better than any GPS downloads or Google Maps or anything else that I've come across. So having that to cross-reference if you're really trying to get off the track is quite helpful. All right, guys, that concludes our 15 tips to survive and thrive in Baja, California, Mexico. We want to thank Amy and Matt for uh, participating in this video with us. And if you guys like love all this B-roll footage that we've been dropping on you in this video, all that footage is on their channel and our channel. So make sure you guys go and hit the subscribe button to His and Hers Vlogs and the Traveling Together Journal. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. It's been fun sharing all this information with you. Bye. Bye.